This program is proudly brought to you by Puma Energy and proudly supported by BSB, official sponsor of the 2015 Pacific Games. And New Guinea, exclusive carrier for the 2015 Pacific Games. And Coral Sea Hotels, preferred accommodation provider of the 2015 Pacific Games. Hello and welcome once again to Road to Port Moresby 2015. Tonight on the show, we'll be taking a look at one of PNG's most recognizable and successful athletes, and we'll also go behind the scenes in terms of logistics and personnel that will be involved in the Pacific Games next year. Now, Tukana, we also take a look at how the host broadcast will be looking to shed the light of the Pacific to the rest of the world, and we also talk to the general public to get their views on what they think of the Games come next year. Lorraine, now before that, as I initially mentioned, we'll be taking a look at one of PNG's most elite and recognizable athletes, that's Ryan Pinney. Now, he's come this far due to his dedication and commitment to the code of swimming. And one of his most memorable highlights, as well as the countries, would have to be in 2006, where he won gold in the Commonwealth Games. Now, Tokon, apart from all his success and glory, he has an extremely humbling charisma. He's a very family-oriented man, and it's sad to say that next year will be the last time for him to ever compete. So without further ado, we'll take a look at Ryan Pinney's journey to success. Ryan Penny, one of Papua New Guinea's most successful and recognizable athletes, was led to success by his dedication and commitment to the sport of swimming. Apart from Penny's prime record of prestigious gold medals, he has a humbling charisma. His first gold medal was won at the South Pacific Games in 1999 following a number of successes in 2003, 2007 and 2011. Whilst representing his country at elite competitions, Pinney's most recognizable achievement was in the year of 2006 when he broke the world record after competing in the 100 meter butterfly sprint, coming first and earning the second gold medal to ever go down in PNG sporting history. As they bring it home, Ryan Pinney at Papua New Guinea is still in front. Now they're trying to swim him down. Burmese to refuse here and there's a challenge. Burmese to perhaps. Pinney's still in front. I think PNG's going to win this. Ryan Pinney, here comes Quinn. Caps on the air. Despite his Australian heritage, Ryan Pinney was born in Papua New Guinea on the 10th of December, 1981. The third youngest of four children with two older brothers and one sister, Pinney went to school at the Elamari International School where he was first introduced to swimming by his parents at the age of six. Pinney then progressed on to high school at the Port Moresby International School. Pinney's motivators and biggest fan base was and still is mum, Sarana and dad, Kevin. Longtime citizens and general ambassadors of Papua New Guinea his parents began a family business which has become PNG's mega stationary warehouse in the heart of Port Moresby, Theodis. The opportunity for Ryan to compete in front of the home crowd. His entire career that has never been possible. So this is going to be something very unique and very special. And you know, he's excited about doing that and giving the rest of the country an opportunity to see him swim at full speed. You know, he gets to swim here at the smaller swimming carnivals but competing at an international level 
uh, high quality meat is is something very special. So, and the family will be there supporting, but you know we are very involved at the at sports and all levels. We're probably going to be busy working through the whole thing. So, it's going to be a very busy time for us as well. Ryan has a very supportive family who has played an impartial role in his swimming success over the past decade. Pinny got married at the age of 30 to Brisbane-based Carly Vincenzi in October 2011, whom he loves and treasures for being a loving partner, a supporting mentor and a driven manager. Well, initially I didn't really know how famous he was until I actually moved here and everyone wanted his photo, everyone wanted his autograph. Um, yeah, so it was, it was a bit to take in when I first came here uh, to live, but yeah, it makes me quite proud uh, to know that he has the nation behind him. Um, I try and support him as much as I can. Um, I like to uh, go and watch him compete and yeah, basically travel with him most trips that he goes to uh, with his competitions. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm really proud of him. And Something that I get reminded of daily just with people that I meet out in the streets, um, you know, when I go shopping or wherever it is in PNG, I get reminded of that and it's very, it's very humbling. Um, you know, it's something that I um, never really dreamt that would happen and it's all just sort of fallen upon um, just from the last you know couple of years of competition so it's it's very it's it's an awesome feeling and um, you know I try and make the most of it and give as much as I can back to people because I know I know what it's like you know when you see someone that you idolize or uh, you know it's famous and um, you know I try to give my respect back to those that, uh, that follow. Ryan Pinney brought the nation to a standing ovation in the year 2006 when he was awarded PNG's second gold medal in the 100 metre butterfly sprint at the Commonwealth Games in Melbourne. Now on the public domain, Pinney says winning a gold medal has not changed him, instead moved him to becoming an inspiration to others. Despite being prone to injury within the last few years, nothing has stopped the swimming sensation from going back into the pool and doing what he desires to represent Papua New Guinea. I'm definitely more aware and um, I train a lot smarter than what I used to. So back back in the day, so I've had four shoulder operations, uh, and they used to occur every two years <laughs> for me. So it was it was very difficult, and that's one of the things I put my body on the line to be able to do this uh, this swimming that I do. And um, I'm a lot smarter about it now, and I've learnt a lot of practices to keep my my body in shape before I get in the pool. And at the moment, things are looking pretty good. Um, I haven't needed any immediate attention to any areas of my shoulder, so I feel good about that. Pinny enjoys the outdoors more than anything. Wakeboarding, kite surfing, diving and motorbike riding are all pastime activities he enjoys the most. An impartial aspect of every athlete's life is their diet. However, Ryan is not one to fuss over the food and diet he consumes. As part of his competition preparations, Ryan adapts to strict regimes, monitoring elements of his diet leading up to swim meets. Pinney's greatest strength, as he proclaims, is his family and his countrymen of Papua New Guinea. With his swimming career aside, Ryan spends most of his time running his family business of theodist as a corporate manager. Ryan and wife Carly are also planning to have kids of their own after the 2015 Pacific Games. And in saying that, he hopes his children will follow his footsteps in being proud Papua New Guineans. We, we definitely do want to. We postpone things, you know, when I was swimming, so that uh, you know we would have a family-free time to build up for Olympics. And you know, we've been trying um, for a little while now, and, and hopefully that'll all come to to be. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, definitely trying. We've got this little one here who keeps us busy, so. Um, yeah, 
ne next year. <laughs> As all athletes gear up for the 2015 Port Moresby Pacific Games, like many other athletes, Brian is ecstatic to be given his final opportunity at stepping up onto the podium to represent his country and perform in the eyes of his countrymen. Uh, you know, I think about it every now and then. Well, actually, it's on my mind quite a lot, and um, it actually does bring quite a lot of butterflies to my stomach because I know that it will be a big thing. Um, and there's going to be a lot of pressure on, um, on quite a lot of athletes to be able to win gold. So uh, I'm trying to prepare myself now for it and um, you know, get, try and build up the nerves so that when I'm competing, then I can um, you know, shut everything out and just focus on the swimming. While he draws to the end of his professional swimming career, Ryan remains a prideful Papua New Guinean and is one of the greatest ambassadors for sport in the nation. Leading the PNG swim team at the 2015 Pacific Games, Ryan and the rest of Team PNG are looking forward to seeing the nation at the Games. See you all at the 2015 Pacific Games! Now there's been a lot of emphasis on the venues and infrastructure and of course the athletes preparations leading up into the 2015 Pacific Games but we haven't actually taken a glimpse into the operations happening behind the scenes. And just to give you an idea about what we can expect next year, 24 different countries will be coming into the nation's capital. They'll be competing in 28 different sporting codes, 1,000 technical officials and not to mention 500 team officials including 3,500 athletes. Now with that many people being in the country at the same time next year, you can only imagine the security measures in place. Now in saying that, there will be 1,900 police personnel involved to ensure the smooth sailing of the Games. The 2014 Port Moresby Pacific Games are soon to hit the shores of Papua New Guinea, with the opening ceremony just seven months away. While much of the emphasis has been situated around the soon-to-be state-of-the-art venues, which are yet to be completed, not much has been done to highlight the sheer scale of this event. With the assurance of the government and private sector partnerships in regards to the completion of the venues, here's a look at just how much manpower, how many logistics and the assiduous workload put in to ensure the smooth sailing of what will be the biggest event in the whole of the Pacific region. While we worry about the venues, much has been done and is still ongoing behind the scenes with the Games Organising Committee working tirelessly to manage a huge cluster of numbers. There are 24 participating countries, 28 sports, 500 team officials which is expected to exceed, 1,000 technical officials with an estimated 2,000 volunteers and an astounding 3,000 contractors. At current, 3,500 athletes will be present and you can only imagine the security ramifications without controlled security personnel. First we came to a police liaison officer, Mr. Manning is here. Uh, we have got some assistance from the government and our committee has been working uh, very well and uh, we, we, we are on target. Um, we want to get all the um, uh, resources uh, to be in place uh, before uh, July uh, 2015. So um, our budget has gone through and um, I think we've got some uh, very good support from the government. 
and uh, that is our basis and our strength to move forward uh, for the SP Games. And we are confident that we'll be there. 1,900 police officers, 300 defense force and 300 correctional services personnel have been engaged in mediating the games and controlling security measures. With the assistance from the host broadcast and MTV, there will be 10 live sites throughout PNG, making the games accessible to communities outside of the nation's capital. A big part of the games is uniting our Pacific nations through the name of sports. With tours, provincial visits, and many other community initiatives driven by the games organizing committee, the 2014 Port Moresby Pacific Games will be our games the games of the people. Now the 2015 Pacific Games is expected to be a spectacular event and having said that, broadcasting the game is really important. We'll be broadcasting the games to the country as well as the rest of the Pacific region including the world and the host broadcast will be in charge of controlling the dissemination of raw footage. Now Martin Perry, who's actually the production manager of the host broadcast, will be working in alliance with MTV as PNG's lead broadcast and of course Telecom to ensure the successful dissemination of raw footage. Now this will be the first of its kind and it will certainly set the platform for many other Pacific games to follow. Having said that, in this segment we'll be taking a look at the roles and responsibilities of the host broadcast. Following the announcement of MTV as Papua New Guinea's lead broadcaster, recently Martin Perry, a man well and truly capable of managing the host broadcast team as production manager at the 2015 Pacific Games, put into perspective the significance behind the broadcasting of the games. I'm here so that we can start looking at all of the television coverage that's going to be uh, generated from the games. While so much has been invested into ensuring these games are the first of its kind and a benchmark for other Pacific games to